When you're returning from a mission, you need a way to get your flight on the ground that's both quick and safe. In this video, we'll go over how you can do both as part of a formation. When the U.S. Air Force wants to land a flight of fighters, they'll typically use a procedure known as the break. In the break, fighters will pitch out of the formation one at a time in predetermined intervals to build a safe amount of spacing and then land using an overhead pattern. The overhead pattern is pretty simple. Here's how the FAA defines the pattern. There are several legs that are flown in the overhead pattern, but we'll focus on three of them for our landing. The downwind, base, and final. This pattern can go through a right or left orbit depending on the airfield layout and local procedures. In our overhead break, we'll start off by flying on the runway heading. Then we'll pitch out one by one beginning at the threshold and turn onto the downwind leg. Instead of making a separate base turn and final, we'll do a combined final turn down to touchdown for each aircraft in the flight. That final turn starts at a point called the perch. We'll go over how you can find the perch during your landing later in the video. When approaching the airfield, the lead pilot will contact the tower on behalf of the entire flight. Once the flight has permission for an overhead break, the flight should enter a formation that lets each member peel off without going in front of another aircraft. For a right-hand overhead pattern, you would want a formation like Echelon Left. Remember, your contract airspeed for basic formations is 300 knots, and it's typical to be 1500 feet AGL during this initial approach to the airfield. Lead will start the pitch out by doing a kiss off hand gesture to let the rest of the flight know not to follow and then make the first turn over the runway threshold. This is where the rest of the flight will build correct spacing. The official publication says you should wait 5 seconds to build 3000 feet of spacing or 8 seconds if you need more spacing. Once it's your turn, begin a 180 degree level flight turn onto the downwind leg. In the future, if you're flying an aircraft with a flight path marker, you'll want to keep that marker right on the horizon throughout the turn. Use this turn to reduce airspeed below 240 kcas, but no less than final turn airspeed. One thing to keep in mind here, if you're flying a different aircraft than our T-38 stand-in, then this speed is going to be different for you. Your final turn airspeed will be dependent on other factors like how heavy your aircraft is. But you don't want to be too fast or too slow since that will affect spacing in the air and on the runway. When you're on your downwind leg, you can check that you're in the right position with the simple visual reference. In this case, we want to see the runway a fist height above the canopy rail to know we have the correct separation for our turn onto final. Since we can't put a fist up on the canopy rail in DCS, we'll just have to memorize the spot. Here's our canopy picture when we're one mile away from the runway and 1500 feet above it when viewed from the default head position. Aim to get the runway just above the wingtip rail while you're on the downwind leg. This spacing will change if you have a crosswind. Adjust your spacing by one tenth of a mile for every 10 knots of crosswind. The real life visual reference for this is one finger. Unfortunately, we can't use this yet in DCS, so use your best judgment. Earlier in the video, we talked about starting your final turn at a point known as the perch. If you've flown your downwind leg correctly, you'll arrive at the perch when reaching a 45 degree angle from the runway threshold. Here's what that looks like in the F5. If you're one mile from the runway center line and at the correct altitude, then you can draw a line from the wing's forward edge to your aim point. Once you have the runway threshold lined up at your aim point, you're at the perch. If the runway has overrun chevrons, you can also use those as a reference since they're typically canted at a 45 degree angle. Starting your turn at this perch point, your goal is to end up one mile out from the threshold and 300 feet above the runway. This sets you up for a gentle 2.5 to 3 degree glide to touchdown. It's a good idea to learn some of the landmarks around your airfield to help you with your approach. Here's an example of what to look for. At the Sanaki field on the Caucasus map, you can see this nav beacon three quarters of a mile out from the runway. This north-south road is one mile out. When you're crossing the road, you should be at approximately 300 feet on a 2.5 to 3 degree glide slope. 
After we're whales down, our job isn't over just yet. When we're coming down as part of a large group, there might be aircraft in front of us and behind us while we're on the runway. To prevent collisions, we separate the runway into hot and cold sides. The cold side is always the side we'll be exiting from. It has our taxiway and ramp. The hot side will be the other side of the runway. These two sides work just like the slow lane and passing lane on a highway. When you've slowed down significantly, you want to pull over to the cold side so that the hot side is open for faster aircraft that need to pass you. Just remember to land on the center of the runway when possible and then move to a side as needed. On a lot of airfields, the hot and cold side is obvious. But if you ever find yourself on one where it isn't obvious, make sure the hot and cold sides are in the briefing. Landing a large group of aircraft without a plan can be a lengthy and risky process, but following a solid procedure can make it fast and safe. To recap, we want to approach the airfield in a formation that's suitable for the break, like echelon. The first aircraft will pitch out at the end of the runway. After that, we wait 5 seconds, or more if needed, between breaks to build spacing. Use a visual reference on the downwind to get into position. Then start your final turn at the perch, which is 45 degrees off the spot you want to land on. Lastly, you want to cover any variables like hot and cold sides and air speeds in your mission briefing to avoid any confusion while you're flying. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.